Now we're going to get into uh, how to deal with chords, how to deal with chords that are not triadic and you can't just you can't just give them C major as a label or D half diminished seven. You know, all these things are are good, but after a while it becomes kind of a stretch when you start having added you know five added tones to your three. You know, <clears throat> the three of your triad. So uh, we need a new way to handle these, and that's what we want to do now. Now, just to be real clear about this, I'm going to start by just looking at what we normally do when we're dealing with a triad. So we can have we can have chords spread out all over the place. Um, so let me write this. Like so. Now, what do you do when you process this? This is a familiar chord. Identify it first. What is this chord? C chord. C. And what quality? Um, uh, inversion. It is inverted. So we could say C major, and I'm going to write it out just to make it clear over E. It's, it's inverted, right? Mm -hmm. Now, how do you get C major? How do you know this is a C major triad so quickly? What do you do to get there? Take into account all the pitches you see. Okay, good. We'll see what makes sense. Mm -hmm. And what do you do with those pitches? You, well, you kind of line them up in your head, you know, try to find a root. Mm -hmm. So I could go, oh, E's the lowest note. Okay, so this is E, G, See, we don't use that configuration, right? What do we do? We stack it in thirds. In thirds. We don't stack it like this. We stack it like this. Now, all those are pretty compact, but you see how that's the most compact form? And this overall span is a sixth. That's a sixth. That's a fifth. Fifth is smaller. We put it in that more compact form. We stack it in thirds, and we're just we're trained to do that so quickly. I just want to make sure that we realize, hey, that's what we do. We stack it up in thirds, and we give this lowest note status of root, and we list that. We say it's C major. The reason we call it C major is because that ends up on the bottom when we stack it up in that standard format. So we rearrange the notes into the standard form. The lowest note is our root. And we're that far. Now, how do we get to this C major? What makes it major? There's a lot of major. information there too. Major third. It's a major third from that um, root. Mm -hmm. And there's also a minor third. Yes, yeah. If we wanted to show that one as well, usually we learn it as intervals from the root, mm -hmm. and say if you have a perfect fifth and a major third together, you have a major triad. So we get the major by looking at the interval content from the root. That's what we're doing, right? Okay, now we're going to do something very similar with other kinds of, of sets. Maybe I should pick one that we're going to actually use here. Maybe. Let's this is a crazy improvisation by Cecil Taylor. And this guy goes on for hours. Okay, this is a huge improvisation, and I'm cutting in here at a certain place uh, within this. Uh, this was made by somebody else. This transcription was somebody else's work. I just forget the guy's name right now, but I've uh, I've copied it over here for you so you can see it. Um, the bar lines are completely his interpretation. It has nothing to do with meter. He's just dividing out what he thinks are are units based on motives, I think. So don't think that that means anything about meter. Um, the brackets show what he feels are important gestures in the music, kind of like motives. He's bracketing because there's something that sort of makes them cohere. Those notes belong with one another. So this is a transcription of an improvisation. It is completely crazy. Um, let me let you hear it. The man is not thinking in normal triads by any stretch. These are very different kinds of 
stuff like that. We're going to create a, some tools to get at even wacky improvisation like this. So let's look at one of his sets. How about where he sort of frees it up a little bit and uses some big leaps toward the end of the first measure in quotation marks. See the first bar line? Right in front of that is something that he has been marked with a bracket. Mm -hmm. uh, let's look at what those notes actually are. What do we need? Need a D. Oops. Need a D. What else? E. E. Good. B flat. Am I missing anything? That's it, isn't it? It's just those three. So it's these three pitch classes. Now. What we're going to do is we're going to put this in the most compact form we can get it into. Just like we put this into a standard format, stacking it in thirds, putting it in the most compact form we possibly can, we're going to do the same thing for this. So if you want to find intervals, you could do it in a couple ways. One way, I'll show it um, with pitch class. Pitch class is listed here. My first step is to put it in scalar order. In other words, I want to make sure that I'm not zigzagging around, going up and down, but I'm, I'm going up consistently. If you want a quick check on that, um, you can just make sure that you are ascending numerically through the pitch class numbers. But scalar order, that's our first thing. Climb through it. Don't go down and up and back and forth. Go straight up. That's what I mean by scale at work. And I don't care if you show it this way or, th or this way. Either way, you've got pitch classes. And so that you know that I'm dealing with pitch classes, the standard thing to do is to use these curly braces around it. That says what I'm including here between these braces is pitch class information. These are pitch classes. So that's meaningful to put those... The, the choice of bracket is, bra the choice of braces is important. Okay, now let's find intervals between these things. D to E is two semitones. I'm going to do everything in terms of semitones. E to B, that's a tritone or six semitones. This B flat to D, I'm going to do the wraparound because I want to find every interval. That wraparound interval is a four semitone interval. You can do it around a clock face, too. So this is just another way to list out those pitch classes and find the intervals involved. So if you've got your clock face, you can find 2, 4, and 10 on there. 2, 4, and 10. And then you can see those intervals in a hurry. Here's our 4, here's our 2, and this is our 6. You see what I'm doing? I put it in scalar order, and then I find the intervals. So step two, find intervals. Now what I want to do, my goal here is to put it in the most compact form I possibly can. And the, what I found to be the quickest way to do that is to avoid the big interval. What's the biggest interval? Six. Six. So I'm going to try and kick that out and make that the wraparound interval. So if I want to do that, I want to start here and go this way around. See why? I want to run away from that interval. That's a big gap 
So let's start here and then we won't have to include it in our list. Start on B flat then and go B flat D E and then we'll see that our interval 6 is in last place. We're not including it. That makes it as compact as we can get it. Don't forget your braces around there to make it clear that those are pitch classes. So I can show it this way. It's a clock face. I can show it this way by listing them out. And I can also put them on a, on a clef. Here, a bass clef. B flat, D, and E. So this had a six span, D and B flat, but this one has a tritone span. That's smaller. I'm getting it as compact as I can get it. Tight. And I'm ensuring that by putting the biggest interval last. Um, I'll say it this way. Exclude the biggest interval. I rewrite it so I can exclude that big interval. I want to push it to the very end. And then I know it's as compact as I can get it. This compact form is called normal form. So the result of this is normal form. Now I have a root, <laughs> sort of. Now I have to do this. I have to do the scare quotes around it because it's not really a root. You know, it's not like the other notes belong to it in any sense. But it's a similar, a similar thing. When I put it in this normal form, so this is, this is not normal form. This is normal form. Normal form. In other words, it's as compact as I can get it. Normal form is in the smallest span possible. I squish it down, make it small. And we just, hey, man. So we put root <laughs> there. Again, we have a point of reference. We have a place from which we can say what the intervals are away from it. Here we were looking at a major third and a, and a perfect fifth, and we could say that's C major. Now we can say this is a B chord, B flat chord, with what quality? We want to get at that quality. So what am I going to do next? Well, now I want to I want to get at that quality issue, and so what I'll do is I'll list the intervals from the reference pitch class for my three. I want to, I want not pitch classes, but let's the intervals. And the root. And instead of root, we can use referential pitch class, our point of reference from where we build. So I'll, I'll often say that. pitch class. Okay, well what would that look like? I haven't gone anywhere and that'll be zero. I noticed something. In the in tonal intervals, we do some weird things. Very weird. Because we go, okay, here's a unison one. Now wait a minute. One, why are you counting? You haven't gone anywhere. If you want an interval, you want a distance, right? That's, that's really weird. So then the, the fallout from that is you say, okay, I'm going to go two unisons. <laughs> you know, you can't, how are you going to count those? Or how about this? I go a third plus a third. Three plus three is six. It should be six. But in tonal land, you get three plus three equals five. five. It's all messed up because basically, in essence, what you're doing is you're counting the rungs on the ladder instead of the steps you take. You're counting the steps as physical steps. And so you go like this. Okay, ready? 
one. <laughs> you know, you haven't gone anywhere yet. And then you go, you know, you, you've got to take, you should be saying one as you take the step, because that's an interval, that's a distance taken, right? And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to say zero. I'm going to better do this a little higher. Can you, all, can you see this? <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, good. So, um, I start here. Here's my, this is my intervallic recipe. And I'm not doing it in major thirds because those are a mess. I'm doing everything in semitones. So I start here and I say, not one, I say zero. I haven't gone anywhere yet. I'm at the starting blocks. Then I go up a major third or four semitones. So I write that. And then this interval is six. And so I write that. And I get zero, four, six. Actually, I need to match the textbook here that we're using and do something a little different. I need to do this. I'm constantly forgetting on it which way our textbook does it. But now, that intervallic recipe, let me write intervallic recipe here. is also called uh, a set type. In other words, it's the quality of this chord. But this is the, the term I'd like you to remember for it. It's a set type. It's a type of, of set of pitch classes. It's a three note set, a set of three pitch classes. It has a certain quality to it, and we're specifying what that quality is by giving an intervallic recipe for creating it. So if you say, okay, I want 0, 4, 6. I want four semitones and six semitones up. You just need to tell me where to start, where I can choose a place. So I might start on, say, F sharp. And you say, okay, I want 0, 4, 6. I want F sharp, 0, 4, 6. So I'll go, okay, give, give me a major third. That's the four. up. Zero, four, six. I've, it's, an, it's a recipe. It tells me what I need, what ingredients, intervallic ingredients I need, all measured from the reference pitch class, the referential pitch class. You see how similar that is to this procedure over here? We have a bunch of notes. We scramble them, re rework them to put them in this compact form. We call the lowest note the root. And we say, okay, now build from there up a major third and up a perfect fifth. It's an intervallic recipe. That's what that major tells you. We're doing something similar. We put this set in a compact form, the most compact we can get. We call that lowest note the referential pitch class. It's our point of reference. And then we say, okay, well, what intervals do you need to make that happen? What's the quality of this chord? And the set type gives you that recipe for creating that quality chord. So some important terms come up. To communicate with other people, you should know what normal four means. It just means the most squished you can get it. Is that technical? Squish? Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, don't call it the most squished. Call it normal form. Okay, so it's that's normal form, squished into the, the trash compactor version. You know, normal. It's called the normal form. So a set put in normal form. You now know what that means. It just means you've you've made it the smallest span possible overall. And then the set type is really just an issue of quality. What kind of quality do we have? And we take the lowest note, the referential pitch class, make that our starting point, and we give the intervals up from it. So the set type is just intervals from your, your referential pitch class, from your, your root.